Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to be looking at graphical representations of chemical reactions and let's review real quick. In an earlier video we learned about the rate law, right? We said that if we have a chemical reaction right here where A is decomposing into B and C then we can write a rate law for this chemical reaction right here and that a rate law expresses the relationship between the rate of a reaction and the concentrations of the reactant or reactants. So if we wanted to write a rate law for this chemical reaction right here we would simply say that the rate is going to equal the rate law constant K times the concentration of A raised to some sort of power of M here where M here is the order of our reaction and that the order of our reaction right here or reactant compares the concentration of reactant consumed over a given amount of time and so we learned how to write the rate law for a chemical reaction in an earlier video and in this video what we are going to do we are going to take a look at reaction orders we spoke about reaction orders in an earlier video so we're going to take a look at zero order reactions, first order reactions, and second order reactions, and take a look at what those reactions might look like on a graph if we should happen to graph them. So let's first start talking about zeroth order reactions. So let's take a look at zeroth order reactions first. It says right here that in a zeroth order reaction, like the one below, the rate of the reaction is independent of the concentration. And no matter the concentration of ammonia gas, the reaction proceeds at the same rate. So let's suppose we have a chemical reaction right here where ammonia gas is decomposing into nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. And so what we're going to do is we're going to perform this reaction on three different trials, right? We're going to perform this on three different trials right here. And if you take a look, in trial three, we're going to start off with a concentration of NH3 here equal to 0 0.25 molar. And we're going to then perform this experiment again in trial two. And we're going to this time double the concentration. If we take a look at the rate here, the rate remains unchanged. Even though we're increasing the concentration between trial three and trial two and trial two and trial one, the rate remains unaffected. So in a zeroth order reaction, it says right here, the rate of the reaction is going to be independent of the concentration. For example, if we take 0.5 divided by 0.25 and we're comparing trial 2 and trial 3, we're going to get 2, an answer of 2. If we raise this to the m power and then set this equal to 2.0 times 10 to the negative third divided by 2.0 times 10 to the negative third, we're going to get 1. So 2 to what power equals 1? Well, we know anything to the zero power equals one. So to write our rate law here, rate is going to equal K, which is the rate law constant times the concentration of NH3 raised to the zero power. And we know that anything raised to the zero power is just one. So rate is going to equal K times one, or rate is simply going to equal K. And so if we graph our rate law for this chemical reaction, rate equaling K, it's going to look something like this right here. We'll notice that the rate of our chemical reaction remains unchanged. It's not changing even if we change the concentration. If we double the concentration or triple it or quadruple it, if we cut it in half, if we cut it by one-fourth, the rate remains the same. So what is the graph of a zeroth order reaction going to look like? Uh, for the for its rate law, it's going to look like this right here. But we w what we can also do is we can also take what is called the integrated rate law using a little bit of calculus. And we're not going to go into great detail here. That's going to be for an AP chemistry class. But if you take the integrated rate law over here, what this right here is going to allow us to do, it's going to allow us to determine what the concentration of NH3 is going to be at say 10 seconds. If we wanted to figure out what the concentration here of NH3 is going to be after 10 seconds of this chemical reaction taking place, well, we'd simply put in the time right here in seconds. We'd put the time here in seconds, and then we would be able to figure out 
what the concentration of ammonia gas is at 10 seconds using the integrated rate law that we see right here. Negative KT times the concentration of ammonia gas initially. This not here means initial concentration of NH3. All right, so if we're taking a look at the integrated rate law, it's going to look something like this. As time goes on, right, as time goes on, the concentration of NH3 here is going to decrease as more and more of this NH3 turns into products, N2 and H2 over here. So understand that concept. We have our rate law uh, graph right here, and we have the graph of our integrated rate law. This allows us to compare the rate versus the concentration. This here allows us to compare the concentration at a given time during the chemical reaction taking place. So let's take a look now at first order chemical reactions. So in a first order reaction, we're going to have a reaction that proceeds at a rate that depends linearly on only one reactant concentration. So let's suppose we have this chemical reaction right here, N2O5, decomposing into NO2 and O2. And so if we take a look at the uh, experimental trials of this chemical reaction, we can see right here that as we double the concentration from 3 to 2 here, in trial three and we compare it to trial two, if we're doubling the concentration of N2O5, right, so if we double the concentration of N2O5, then we notice that the rate is also doubling. So two to what power is gonna equal two? Well, M here is going to equal one, right? And so the order of our reactant, and in fact, our entire reaction right here, because we only have one reactant is one. So to write our rate law for this chemical reaction right here, rate is going to equal the rate law constant times the concentration of N2O5. And if we take a look right here, if we double the concentration again, the rate is also going to double. So here's our rate law. And if we wanted to graph our rate law, it's going to look something like this, right? If we graph the rate law for our chemical reaction right here, it's going to look like this, right? And so if the concentration doubles, what this graph is telling us is if the concentration here doubles or uh, decreases by one half, then the rate is going to double or decrease by one half, right? And so we can see that the graph of our rate law for a first order is going to be linear, right? It's going to be linear. If the concentration is is uh, quadrupling, then the rate of the chemical reaction is also going to quadruple. And if we take the uh, integrated rate law for this rate law right here, we're going to end up with this right here, right? And so, uh, like we said earlier, this is mostly going to be something you're going to do in an AP chemistry course. But what this little formula allows us to do is it allows us to see the concentration of our N2O5 at any given time during the chemical reaction. So what if we wanted to know the concentration of N2O5, say, after 10 seconds? Well, our integrated rate law allows us to do that, where the rate law over here and its graph just allows us to compare the concentration of N2O5 to the rate of the chemical reaction. All right, so understand what the uh, rate law graph for first order reactions looks like and what the integrated rate law graph for first order reactions looks like as well. Let's take a look now at second order chemical reactions. And so let's take a look at second order reactions. It says right here that in a second order reaction, the sum of the exponent or exponents in the rate law is equal to two. And two examples of a second order reaction would be uh, this rate law right here, where rate equals the rate law constant times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. And we can see that this is going to be a second order reaction because the exponent here is one, the exponent here is one. And if we add these together, we're going to end up with two for our second order reaction. And we can also have a rate law that looks like this, where we only have one reactant, right? But that reactant is second order. 
and so rate equals K times the concentration of A squared. And so if we take a look at this chemical reaction right here where NO2 gas is decomposing into nitrogen gas and oxygen gas, it looks like this right here, right? The rate lot is gonna look like this right here. We only have one reactant. So let's take a look at this chemical reaction. It looks like we have a table here, and what's happened is uh, we performed this chemical reaction on three separate trials, trial one, trial two, trial three. And what we've done is we've changed the concentration of NO2 each time. And then we've taken a look at the rate of our chemical reaction. And so let's compare trial two to trial three. If you notice here, what we're doing is we are doubling the concentration between trial three and, and trial two. And so what we can do is we can take this 0 0.200 and divide it by 0 0.100 and we're gonna end up with two to the m power, like we learned in an earlier video, equaling, if we take 4.0 times 10 to the negative third divided by 1.0 times 10 to the negative third, we're gonna end up with four. So two to what power here is going to equal four? Well, m is going to equal two. Two to the second power equals four. So the order of this reactant right here is two. And because we only have one reactant, the order of the reaction is in fact two. So if we wanted to write the rate law for this chemical reaction right here based on the information we see in this table, the rate law is going to be rate equaling the rate law constant times the concentration of NO2 squared. And so what does this look like on a graph? What if we were to graph the rate law for this chemical reaction? Well, it's going to look like this right here. And so how can we interpret this graph? What this graph is telling us is that if we increase the concentration of NO2 just a little bit, then the rate of that chemical reaction is going to increase just a little bit as well. However, if we start to increase the concentration more and more, it's going to have more and more of an effect on the rate. And if you take a look here, if we double the concentration here, take a look the rate is going from 4.0 times 10 to the ne uh, negative third to 16.0 times 10 to the negative third. It's exponential growth here in the rate, right? So the rate is speeding up more and more uh, every time we double the concentration, right? There's exponential uh, increase in the rate of our chemical reaction right here. And so what we can now do is we can take the integrated rate law and that's what we see over here. So let's suppose we wanted to find the concentration of NO2 at, say, I don't know, 10 seconds. So what if we wanted to figure out the concentration of NO2 after 10 seconds of this chemical reaction taking place? Well, we can use the integrated rate law to figure that out, right? We can plug 10 seconds into this formula right here and calculate what the concentration of NO2 gas will be after 10 seconds. And so if we graph the integrated rate law, it's going to look something like this right here, right? And so what this graph is telling us is that as more and more time goes on during the chemical reaction, we are going to start to see drastically less concentration of our uh, reactant as time goes on. And eventually it's going to be pretty nominal or close to zero right here, depending on what the, uh, well, this is an equilibrium, so depending on what the equilibrium constant ends up being. All right, so understand that concept that we have our rate law expression for second order reactions that look like this if we graph them. And then we can take the integrated rate law that allows us to determine the concentration of our reactant at a given time into our, uh, our chemical reaction. All right, so let's take a look now at how we can compare zeroth order reactions, first order reactions, and second order reactions, and put them all on a graph so you can see what they're gonna look like. And so in summary, just make sure you understand that the rate law is gonna allow you to compare the reaction rate and the concentration of the reactant, and that the integrated rate law is gonna allow you to compare the concentration of reactant or reactants at a specific time during the chemical reaction. And so what we've done here is we've just put the graph of zeroth order uh, reactions, first order reactions, and second order reactions all on the same graph so you can see what they look like together. And then what we've done over here is we've taken the integrated rate law for zeroth order, first order, and second order reactions and put them on the same graph 
So that way you can kind of see and compare what they, they might look like. And so let's take a look at an example. It says right here that we want to determine the rate of the chemical reaction at 20 seconds. So it looks like what we have here is we've graphed a, uh, a second order chemical reaction and we have the concentration right here and we have the time on the x-axis. And so what we have to do here is determine the rate of the chemical reaction at 20 seconds. And so if we take a look closely, we're asked to determine the rate of the chemical reaction when we have the concentration on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. So how can we do this? How can we figure out the rate of the chemical reaction at 20 seconds right here? Well, we'll go to 20 seconds on the x-axis and we'll go up to our graph of our second order reaction and we'll draw a little dot right here. And so what we then need to do is we then need to figure out what the rate of our chemical reaction is at this point on our graph at 20 seconds. So what we can now do is draw a tangent line to this point on our graph and then we're going to connect this tangent line making a right triangle, right? So this tangent line becomes the hypotenuse in our right triangle that we're going to make using our tangent line that we've drawn to this point 20 seconds. And so let's think about this. If we know the slope of this line right here, then the slope of this line right here is going to be the rate of our chemical reaction. So the rate is equal to the slope essentially. However, the slope here, as we see, is negative, and we can't have negative rate, so the rate here is equal to the absolute value of our slope at 20 seconds. And so, how do we find the slope now? Well, if you remember from Algebra 1, slope is equal to rise over run. And so, what we can now do is we can figure out our rise using y2 and y1 coordinates, and we can figure out our run using x2 and x1 coordinates. And when we divide those two, we'll get our slope, and the slope will be equal to the rate at 20 seconds. So how do we do this? Well, let's take a look. We're asked to figure out the rate of our chemical reaction at 20 seconds, so we need to find the slope of our tangent line here. And so the slope of our tangent line is going to be equal to y2 minus y1, divided by x2 minus x1. And so let's take a look at y2. Let's take a look at this point right here on our graph. y2, it appears, is going to be 0.4. y1, if we take a look closely, is going to be 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, it looks like. So y1 is going to be 2.8. And we're going to divide this by x2. If we take a look, x2 is going to end up being this point right here, which is 32, minus x1, which is this point right here, which is going to end up being 0. I'm sorry, it's going to be 6, 6, it looks like 6. And so when we put this in our calculator, we'll take the absolute value of this. What we end up with is 0 0.0923. So that's going to be the slope of this line right here. That's going to be the slope of our tangent line. And so if we take a look, the rate of our chemical reaction at 20 seconds is going to equal the absolute value of our slope, which we just figured out was this right here. 0 0.0923 and rate is always measured in this unit right here molar per second so the rate of this chemical reaction at 20 seconds is 0 0.0923 what does that mean well the concentration of our reactants is turning into products at 20 seconds at a rate of 0 0.0923 molar per second or 0 0.0923 moles per liter per second. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.